G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing in the color orange. As the English, we've got Corvidus 1 and take a look at that wonderful monument we've got in the middle. That is the first time I'm witnessing that wide boy. Let's make him a little bit wider for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. If you're not familiar with this player, well, perhaps you're a bit more familiar with his previous name, Salami. Is going to be our northern English player today. And on the south side of the map, in the color purple, playing as the Mongols, Voldemar1902, aka The Kid. Another great monument right there as well. Look at that Khan firing off with the hawk in the sky. Beautiful little spot. And we are on, of course, I was going to say on Dry Arabia. This is definitely not Dry Arabia. This is Hill and Dale. This is the completed or the, the done up version, the, the refined version. Let's just put it that way. So one of the things that are missing, what are the things that have been added? Missing, the main thing, there used to be a big gold vein in the back of your base on this map. 8,000 gold. And it meant that you could wall up and forget about the rest of the map. And you could just put a wall here, make it a stone one, put a wall here, make it a stone one, and wall the front, make it stone. And you'd sit in your base, you had plenty of wood, plenty of space, and of course, plenty of gold. Now, you could just, you could just boom, you could eat, go, you could do whatever you wanted, you could tech up and go imperial age i know i did that many a time that was one of my old favorite strategies but i suspect we're probably not going to be seeing that today of course english coming out for corvinus one it's exciting to see the flexibility that he plays with you know he used to play delhi a huge amount he was the delhi main but now he just he switches it out he played holy roman empire for a little bit i think it was the marlians as well for quite quite some time but now just really mixing it up so great to see him on the english and of course voldemar we've seen him on the chinese before been very, very strong whenever we've seen him. And he continues to rise through the ranks. I think at the moment, sitting at about 1,800 rating. Uh, Salami sitting about something similar as well. So these guys are both pretty close to that top 20. Now, if you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, I will remind you to leave a like on the video because it really does help out the traction of the video. So let's talk a little bit about what we can expect here. So this is an interesting matchup because at the lower levels this is favored towards mongols but at the higher levels it's favored towards english one of the reasons why that is is because mongols gain a natural advantage when they attack early on just simply because that's where the power of the sieve is right putting if, if, if you take somebody who's not really prepared for being attacked early you know they've got in their head okay i'm gonna put nine villages on gold or nine villages on food rather two villages on gold and then i'm gonna rally out to wood they, they're not really prepared when all of a sudden they can't put those villages on gold because there's spearmen on their gold mine. But as naturally as you get better, the tables turn. And the English become better in this matchup because players are very competent when it comes to defending. So naturally you see players avoid going for these early attacks, especially with spearmen. Sometimes you do occasionally see it coming out with horsemen in the Dark Age, but it's not to be the case here. Interesting shift as well. We did originally see that there was going to be some uh, some trading happening, but it looks like he switched over to the Deer Stones, which I find a little bit interesting because this is one of the best maps for trading. But another change that's come through is you no longer see the trade post all the way in the corners anymore. Sometimes you get an annoying trade post that appears like this on the edge of the map that's not quite in the corner. Still, you can probably trade with it, but if we take a look here... At what this trade landmark or what this trade route is going to be like for Voldemar, there's a good chance that it comes around the front here. And if these traders decide, hey, we're going to walk around the front to get down to here instead of walking around the safe way, because remember, you you can't guide them. You you can if you've got walls, you can make a wall and you can say, okay, I'm going to wall this off, and then that, the traders will naturally come down around this edge. But there's a good chance that they won't, and there's no way for him to know which way they will go. So I think he's made the right call here in going for the deer stones I, I still think trade is definitely on the menu for the mongols in this matchup especially on this map it's such a great map for trade the one thing to note though he's not committed to it and that, i think that's really smart by the kid so we'll have to watch and see how he looks to play it but i would definitely say if there's not trade on the menu today i would be very very surprised on the other side of the map though corvinus Going to be looking for that second TC. We'll check in with his timing here. It's looking pretty good. I don't think he's using the build from... I think it's Naomi, if I remember correctly. I don't. I, I know uh, the person's name's not actually Naomi, but that, that's what they call themselves, though. Uh, so, anyway. anyway uh, the, the point is, it, it's not the Naomi build order. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a little bit different here, uh, but it's still going to be a pretty, re pretty reasonable time. You can see 
coming down before the five minute mark. I'll take that trade. That is absolutely fine. I suspect we're going to see this landmark over on the, the deer, but instead going to be putting it on the gold. So going for a nice safe play. So I'm expecting to see a castle follow up from this. Normally that's what you'd see if you see the, the town center on the gold. Uh, I guess realistically deer's at the back of the base and it's also pretty safe back here. So it kind of makes sense that it wouldn't be on the deer. But look at all the villagers here. Just in case any kind of Kashyx get some ideas. And speaking of Kashyx getting ideas, Take a look right here. Now, Corvinus has got absolutely no idea about the impending attack. I'm sure he suspects something is up, hence bringing every single villager that, he, that he's got, except for four under the TC and two that have been rallied from the, the town center out to the wood line. He's brought everybody out here to get this up as quickly as he can. And with good reason, these Kashiks are very, very close to the base of Corvinus. Voldemar going to be running through, splitting that forest right now and heading towards that base. Now, interesting to note, we see that the Khan isn't in position he knows nothing about the town center. I suspect he probably knows about the stone, though. That's one thing to note. And you can see him now rallying in towards that stone. Mining camp probably should get deleted here. I would be looking for de a deletion of this mining camp. Otherwise, you may give over the bounty uh, to your opponent. That's always one thing to note. More Keshiks coming out. So going for the double Keshiks. And we do see a market has been made. So it will be trade coming out. So makes them... Oh, I like this a lot. It's double trade. So he sees the double TC coming out from Corvinus, and he says, you know what? You want to go greedy? That's fine by me. I'll just trade behind this. And I love this style. If ever there was a style of Mongols I was going to play, it would be this style right here. Voldemar style town center. It's got to be careful, though. Gets absolutely smacked bang with villagers. And look at this already with the textiles now coming through for Corvinus. He is looking to try and make sure he is not going to be dying early on in this game. Barracks also going to be thrown down. Plenty of villas here on wood. Normally, this indicates to me that there's going to be a lot of uh, of, of uh, farms coming out, but I suspect that's probably not going to be the case. I think the most important thing for Corvinus right now, get some walls up along the back. It's really, really important just to start off with a little bit of walls and look to build that, that mass of, of units in the feudal age. Uh, we can now start to see those farms coming down, so who knows, perhaps there could be a little bit of a play at a castle age, though. But I suspect the barracks are just going to be to get a couple of spears out here, though. We'll ride back on board now with Voldemar and see how he's doing as the first of the markets are down. Looks like he's begun sending or training those those traders. And I'm curious what kind of number this is going to get, but I would suspect it's going to be pretty darn good. I'm going to go for something like 81, 82. Let's go. 82 gold, I think, should be decent. Uh, it's important to note that, obviously, by not going for the trade landmark, your traders aren't going to be as strong. Uh, excuse me, guys. Guys, that is the wrong target. Okay, good. They, they managed to fix it up. Keshik's coming through, though. He's got five Keshik's already in the base. We're at just a little bit before eight minutes here. And I suspect Voldemar's going to see this and know, okay, there's probably a Castle Age coming through off on this. Uh, you know, you've got the farms that are coming up under the TC. You've got the second TC on the gold. So he's probably thinking in his head, okay, what am I going to do to counter this Castle Age? And he knows the answer already. It is just go for a big boy economy. Instead, going to be trading over towards this safe side. I did not expect this. This is... Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't advise this, but I mean, at the end of the day, look, who's who's the 1800 here? Not me. I'll say that much. Market goes down. Corvin is going to do a little bit of trading here, just making sure. So uh, looks like he's bought a little bit of food, I think. Uh, sold a little bit of food by the looks of it. Yeah, so, sold a little bit of food. Uh, and actually, does that make sense? Why would he sell food? I guess he's got food coming in from the... the I, I'm, I'm not sure. Not, normally, I, I like to avoid selling things at the market, especially early on like this. I just prefer to try and balance out the macro. It can be hard to do, though. Sometimes you can only really access one or two resources. You might have your third one locked down, so you might need to do a bit of market trading, and that definitely makes sense here. But we do see second mill going to be coming up and look at the villagers that are transitioning here. I think he realizes he, uh, he's got enough, villi or enough uh, spears here to protect against any kind of threat here. He's going to look to bring them out, though, instead of protecting the VIPs. They're going to run past, but it looks like he manages to pick off one of the Keshiks. Scout coming in the back as well. Look at this, just chasing him down with the dagger. Get him, boy. Corvinus. Doing a great job there. At the same time, towards that north side, we do see those walls coming up now. So, wonderful job. Just really, I, I, I want to just highlight how important it is that he makes spears in this transition period, right? Because in his head, he's like, I want to go Castle Age. But he sees the, the Keshiks. He says, I can't do it alone. I need to make sure I've just got even a handful of spears is wonderful. The problem is that he's going to set him behind a little bit here. Let's check in now down on the south side. See how Voldemar's doing. 
because we can see that he's up to eight traders already, which is a pretty substantial amount, but not really gaining a whole lot from it. Honestly, these, these trades are coming in quickly, but they're not very bulky. I, I would have much preferred him to come up to this trade post over on this west side. It takes a lot longer for the traders to actually arrive, but when they do, they arrive with significantly more resources. My suspicion it would probably be... Uh, I don't know what the efficiencies would be or the percentages, but I imagine it would be something close to like 30 to 40% more efficient uh, for him to go over there. So that's always something to think about. Keshik's now in the middle of the map. Just going to be retreating, bringing it back home. I'm curious what, what he looks to go into, Voldemar, here. Looks like he's going to be switching into archers. And this does make a lot of sense, right? Because from his perspective, you could think, I'm going to go trade. And then from there, I'm going to go Castle Age. But you leave yourself open. Whereas if you go, I'm going to go into trade into units. Well, realistically, what kind of unit composition are the Mongols wanting in the Castle Age anyway? They're wanting the same thing that they want in the Feudal Age. They're looking for veteran archers, lots of archers, together with Keshiks. But he spots out exactly what his enemy's up to and indeed makes the right decision. Doesn't have to drop down any production in an emergency and just says, well, I know exactly what I'm doing. Can I, t can I just say... You, you got to get rid of these damn wolves, my friend. Look at them. They are just down here causing absolute grief, at least to my ears. Looks like he may be heading over towards that side of the map. Hopefully, looks to clear it out. But very interesting to see Corvinus, though. Still working towards that castle age. A little bit of a delay in it, though. Let's check in with the upgrades and see how he's doing. It looks like he's picked up double broad axe together with his wheelbarrow. First one coming through for Voldemar. Now, of course, going to be horticulture. Really, really nice upgrade for the Mongols. And I think we can switch it over now to our incomes. Just get a bit of an idea where they're at, though. It looks like uh, we've got Corvinus about 1,500. We'll worry about that a little bit later as the archers begin to move through. Attack speed going to go down. And it looks like he's able to pick up some fair decent chunks of spearmen. Numbers have begun to fall in Voldemar. I'll tell you what might have him early on in this fight. The one thing to note is the Khan! It doesn't really matter if the Khan goes down. What, what's, so, what's so big about the Khan? Eh. Once you pop that arrow, I think you're good, right? Like, and don't get me wrong, it's annoying the Khan, but... It's it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Anyway, I, I probably I probably shouldn't worry that too that much about it. So, oh my god, was it Voldemar that we watched do this before, where he goes for the second TC while trading as well? Like it's absolutely ludicrous how big this Mongol eco is going to get right now. You've got double market trade up full time. We've got seven uh, traders on this one, eight traders on this one, and the double TC. These are the Giga Boomers. You know, often we think about Giga Boomers like the, the, the Chinese, you know, oh, he's going 3TC Song Dynasty, whoa! Or, or the Abbasid Dynasty, 11TCs! Um, whereas, like, we forget about the Mongols. This is the undercover booming civilization right now. Especially considering the fact, also, that he didn't go for the trade landmark. So you don't really suspect it. But it does get scouted out. Corvinus now aware that there are traders down here. We'll see the numbers on the traders and go, mm, it's not that big of a deal, but he still wants to shut it down, right? If your enemy's ever trading, even if they're doing like the one gold super highway trade strategy, you still want to shut it down. Probably not. I'd let them. They're just wasting their population space. Third TC, they're coming up for Corvinus here. Economy's pretty close to each other. 69 versus 62. Nice. Uh, and now Kashik's going to get caught. Oh, tell you what, Voldemar. Wrong time to look away from the screen, or at least wrong time to look away from your units. Loses about five Keshiks in the space of five seconds. That was not a pretty sight. Numbers are building up, though, on this south side. He suspects that there will be an attack imminent, and he's correct. I think this is a great assessment by him. The fact that he has seen his opponent has, has scouted this out. He was doing a little bit of attacking down here as well. I think he was hitting the, 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 uh, the traders, and subsequently spots it out. Naturally, moves units down here. Scout going to go down. Numbers still looking pretty good for Voldemar. He's got more than Corvinus does. One thing to note, though, is that you don't have longbows, and you definitely don't have veterancy, my friend. Look at the numbers on these bad boys. That's the equivalent right there of picking up a plus, plus two. I think it was. Yeah, plus two attack bonus. That's how good that veterancy is for those longbows. Really, really strong. And now you can see he's just going to kite to the ends of the earth here, and Voldemar's Probably his best bet here is to either fall back or, I mean, realistically, he can just follow as well. Um, it, but uh, you can see that as long as Salami keeps kiting back uh, perfectly, he, sh he should be all right, even though he's down on these numbers at the moment. He's just got to keep kiting. Just keep kiting. You can see it starts to even out here. Even though you're, you're 5 against 10 or 5, oh God, five against 15. How is that 15? Am I, am I not good at counting? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, you know what? My wife said the same thing. She's like, that's not 8, Drongo. That's 2. 
that's an adult joke. That's a dad. Uh, uh, look, I probably. Sh <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, we move on. We move forward. Sorry. Uh, you know, we, we gotta- we gotta be silly. Okay, 79. This is what I was talking about. This is the trade route here that you want to be running. 79. So, more than double the gold of this one here. Uh, but I can tell you right now- actually, is it more than double the gold? 37? Yeah, it is. Just. Uh, what did I say? I thought- I think I said 81. So, pretty damn close. 79. I'll take that trade. But Voldemar's switching it up, and I think that's a- that's a good thing. So, if- if anything, it was somewhat- maybe a, a bad idea for Corvinus to go and attack down there. Kind of forces his enemy off into another direction. Uh, but yeah, you can see he's actually flipping it over now. Uh, so doing the right thing. And it looks like they are going to be coming in on this backside as well, which makes it extra, extra nice for him because now not only are you going to be protecting, but uh, you're also going to be getting a nicer return. But the Knights are now out for Corvinus on this north side. Keep in mind, he's got the triple TC behind it. So even though we've got big Ecos coming out from Voldemar, Corvinus is pretty keeping on top with it. Let's just say that much. And to be honest, who would you rather be? Would you rather be an English player maxed out in the late game with, you know, all your vills safe inside your base? Or would you rather be a Mongols player, a, a Mongol player with like 50% trade? To be honest, I'd probably be the Mongol player. Yeah, Mon Mongol player with 50% traders actually sounds really good in the late game. And maybe that's something that, that will come into, uh, in into this game here is that, you know, we we've talked about it earlier, the fact that you you've got English, Chinese, Abbasid, these big eco civs that we always look at, but often we do forget about civilizations like the Mongols when it comes to the economy. Yeah, when it comes to the late game, if they've got a good, a decent trading economy going, it becomes difficult to stop. Right now, over towards the west side, we can see that he's got a rally point down over towards this uh, this this forest here. It's going to be looking to, to come in. We'll be able to interrupt, and not only that, but we'll also be able to spot out the trader. Spots it out, gets the attack off it, so now all of a sudden he knows, or at least Corvinus knows, you've got to start attacking in multiple or on multiple trade routes. So, oh, oh, that's interesting. That, that's, they're coming around the front. Jeez. How is that even possible? Like, how do these traders, oh, he's, he's probably sent them off. Like, may, maybe they were like mid route here and he's just sent them up. That's probably how or why. Uh, but at this point, now you can look to expect that Corbinus will launch a counter offensive towards this, uh, this trade post. There's a couple of options for him, but one of my favorite things to do, bring your army and at the same time, bring a whole bunch of villagers and just throw down a keep. Look for 20, 25 villagers, throw down that keep, guarantee that your enemy is going to really have to uh, to get you out of there if, if they want to deal with that. But you can see right now, Trader, going to just do the nice little cheeky round the round the corner. Is wait, where are you? Where are you going, Trader? Are you really? Are you really trading right now? How is he? Why is he? Where is he? Who is he? What is he? That is, the, you know, we learned those questions back at, in primary school, but today we examine them once again. All right, looks like the trader has found his wheels. 86. Oh, oh, he was going to, uh, he, so he hasn't actually fixed up the home market for a lot of these guys. So you've got, you've got some with 86 and some with 79. That's the difference that it makes. Center of the map, though. Corvin is going to do the right thing. Look to secure up that gold vein. We talked a little bit earlier about it. The fact that you don't have a lot of gold in the main base anymore. I, I, I often cite it, a game that I remember Demu playing uh, quite a while ago, and it was on King of the Hill. And he only had one gold on the lower ground. His next gold was like on the high ground. And once you take the hill in King of the Hill, it's very hard to take it off the person. And the, the player he was up against took the hill. And there was nothing he could do. He had no... <laughs> there was like... There was one gold on the low ground. And I kind of feel like it's the same right now with the uh with this map hill and dale in that once uh, i mean if you run out of gold and your enemy's got full control of you there's really not a lot you can do so you can see how important it is to establish map control here by Corvinus to get out here onto the map to make sure that he's got that keep in position but now the keshik's gonna be looking to clean up these knights keep in mind he's got yam network already unlocked didn't opt for the trade landmark in age two instead opted to go into the yeah, network. Cleans up the night down to the south. Keshik number's still pretty decent here. You know, we've done a couple of videos where we featured the Keshik. We focused on them quite a bit. And they underperformed every single time. But maybe we shouldn't be looking at the, the Keshik. Maybe we should be looking at the economy that supports it. At the moment, think about this. You've got pretty close to uh, 3,500 resources a minute coming in. In fact, quite a little bit more than that. 3,800-ish, almost 4,000. Compare that over right now to Corvinus. 
who's sitting on uh, a pretty similar number, actually, look, looking about, yeah, about 3,400. But when there's a decent gold economy, I feel like the Keshiks actually have a good chance of shining. But now, big numbers starting to build here. 29 longbows up against 56 archers. He brings brings them up forward. Look at this. Upgrades are pretty decent as well. He's picked up plus two on both of these. At the same time, though, Corvin is still yet to pick up his plus two ranged armor. Keshik's coming through. Looking to get onto that back line. We'll be able to find it in Corvinus. Going to be in a little bit of trouble here as the villagers in the middle of the map. It looks like he may not have brought enough. Or the keep just unfortunately getting shined down upon by Lord Doughty himself. And now Corvinus having to run for dear life despite having such a decent economy here. Just the power spike from that Mongol timing attack was absolutely magnificent. Plenty of villagers have gone down so far in this game, or plenty of workers rather, because we wish not to discriminate against those traders that sometimes do lose their lovely lives. But now he's going to have to fall back once again. This keep should get up a little bit less than 10% to go. But that is an absolutely huge army. I suspect Voldemar might look to push back here. Maybe head to the blacksmith and see exactly what he can look to research. Doesn't look like he's got a blacksmith down there, but of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that siege engineering. There it goes. It's already moving into position as we would expect. He spots the keep and he says, I've got a really big army. I can push right now. So I suspect he's going to be going into the, the improved siege engineering. Doesn't actually have the stone for it, though. We'll need to cancel off those sprinkled emplacements if he wants to get it. Actually, how much is it? He should be able to afford it, actually. It's, what, 75 plus 125? Something like that. 50 plus 125. So, yeah, only 175. Never mind me. Don't worry about me, guys. He will just allow those sprinkled emplacements to come on through. And we'll be looking for that improved siege engineering. Any second. Any second. Any second. He's going for whistling arrows. All right. Well, you do you. I'm, I'm not going to hate. I'll say that much. Fertilization, lumber preservation, specialized pick all coming through now. We'll have enough very, very soon for that improved siege engineering. We can see him moving out now with the Kurul tie. Huge army. Up against Corvinus. Only 11 longbows for him. Is there any possible way he holds right now? There's no gold. He's got no gold in the bank, which means there's no prospect of an Imperial Age. He's got the food for it, though. Look at the size of the mass, though. How does he possibly come back from this? He needs a mango shot. A mango shot could do it. But how do you keep the Keshiks at bay? This just... Uh, has Corbin has just misread this situation massively right now? Where are his units? He had plenty of time and a huge opportunity. Look at the resources in the bank for him. Longbow's going to try and bait away the enemy. You can see he's actually looking for a stone wall here. Looks like the Khan might be able to block it. Indeed, he does spot it. And now plenty of men at arms going to be looking to come through from the front. Oh, we were just talking about Imperial. Take a look at this. Voldemar just in complete control right now. Quadruple the amount of units that his opponent's got. Spring of placement from the keep. Going to be helping out a little bit, but the men at arms get absolutely mauled in the front line by the Keshiks. They are just giving a wonderful support here for that uh, that back line of veteran archers. More Keshiks going to continue rallying in. And now once he gets on top of the production like this, it becomes so difficult for, for Corvinus to even consider a mass. To, to try and rebuild a mass here is going to be so difficult because all of the units are just getting killed as soon as they come out. We can see now that attack speed arrow going to get thrown down here. No time for armor, my friend. That's what he says. But look at this. The men at arm numbers are starting to slowly build here. Moving into elite archers. Very smart move. No need for... Uh, we, we talked earlier about improved siege engineering. I don't even think he's going to bother with it. He says, we'll just go down the throat. But you got to be careful in this position because we talked about it before. That build up of English units. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at this. The men at arms, just a, a handful of men at arms going to be more than enough to dish out the hurt on this force. And look at Salami. He walls him in. He says, sir, you got nowhere left to go. It's me, you, the men at arms. And well, that, that that's that's pretty much that's It's, it's an exhaustive list. Me, me, you and the men at arms and, and the stone walls. I guess we probably want to include that one as well. But he's, he's somehow managing to hold on. The, these English men at arms are ridiculous. Did you see the amount of damage they were taking up on the front? And I want to highlight why they're so good and, and how dangerous it is right now for uh, Voldemar not to be going into crossbows. Have a look how much damage the archers have got. Now, they just got their elite upgrade, which took them from uh, eight uh, or from seven up to eight damage. But before that, they were seven plus two, which gives them nine damage, nine range damage. Now, a normal men at arms has got four armor in the castle age. The problem is these aren't normal men at arms. These are English men at arms, which gives them an extra two armor from from uh, 
sorry, from armor cladding, on top of their plus two. So now they've got eight armor, which means that the archers are doing only a single point of damage to each of those men at arms. And that's why Corvinus was able to overwhelm that, despite it looking like it wasn't going to go the way of him. Jeez, those mangoes got so damn close. Berkshire Palace now going to be thrown down on the bottom side of the map. Keep in mind, we've got double bombard up here. He could look to just push up and take this out. The men at arms are just absolutely fearsome. Keep in mind, though, we do now have the upgrade starting to come through. Elite archers have picked up plus three attack as well as their elite status, which means they're now doing 11 damage compared to the nine damage that they were doing before. Uh, and obviously, that's uh, that's triple the amount of damage when you consider the armor of the enemy, which is kind of crazy, right? Imagine if I told you you could triple your damage in just two upgrades. You'd be like, that's crazy. Well, that's what he's done. So, stone walls have come up. They've looked to protect the base. Villagers tried to come through. Looks like the Kurultai managed to come through. And now the Barkshir is going to come up, and we can see those arrows beginning to fire down upon Voldemar's units. And he's going to be careful here. This is going to fall pretty quickly. He's got 20 units inside. I suspect it's probably 20 villagers. Takes control of the south side of the map now with the Barkshir. Bombard manages to keep it alive. Oh, no. Bombard, where are your wheels? Bombard, sir. Sir, you've, you've left your wheels at home. Ghost Bombard. He floats through the... Dude, I told you the aliens were real. Look at it. Look at it. Aliens have come to Age of Empires 4. I'm not even kidding you. The aliens are here in M Age of Empires 4. Okay, they're, they're gone. How is it floating? I explain that. that. That's one of the observables, right? It, it was clearly... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about the... <laughs> <laughs> it was clearly floating. There was no means. There was no visible means of production. I had no heat signature. <laughs> look, look, look! There's no heat signature. How is it moving? It's, it it look, appears to have a jet engine on the back, but I don't know. The aliens <laughs> have arrived in Age of Empires 4. It's happening. Oh my gosh. All right. Now, th this is going to be... This is one of those games. Now, I, I love the way that Voldemar is playing this because a lot of players would look at that Barkshire and be like, I must kill the Barkshire. Uh, but the reality is you don't. You can just ignore it. And that's exactly what he does. So very smart move there. Look at the economy difference at, at this point. Like, it's absolutely ludicrous. Now, I don't I don't know too much about the numbers behind the scenes, especially considering the idols that we've got coming out from Corvinus at the moment. But I would just say, like, it feels like Voldemar has got so much more stuff than Corvinus has. But now we've got another counterattack. Oh, look, it's another. <laughs> we've spotted another UFO, UFO, sir. Sorry, that's incorrect. It's a UAP now, guys. There's a second one. <laughs> we got we to gotta highlight these bugs more. These bugs are great, you know. We, when The Zoom bug, uh, the UFO bug. Uh, this is now called the UFO bug, by the way. You, you will refer to it as the UFO bug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the best sounds you will ever hear. That 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 is that is the be one of the best sounds you'll ever hear. Full stop. No return. Wait. Full stop. No return. Oh yeah, because a return is like a you you press enter, right? Like that that's what it is. So a return is when you press enter. So we're saying like no enter, just just a full stop. That's it. Two landmarks have gone down though. He's taken out the council hall. He's taken out the main TC. Obviously in the back of the base we've got the king's palace still, but looks like we got ourselves a bit of a base race. Mangadel getting some shots off. He looks to get another one off. It's gonna be on the elite archers and hits a pretty good one. Unfortunately, there's still plenty of units here, though, and Corbin is starting to struggle. Income, not looking the best, sitting at about, what do we got here? 13, 26, 34, rather 38, maybe 4.5k. That's what we're looking at compared to his opponent, who's sitting on something similar, maybe even a little bit less here. So who knows? Maybe the, maybe it's really started to switch. I would have loved to have seen a counterattack that brought even just a couple of men at arms out over onto this trade line. How many traders are we talking about right now? 40 traders in the bank here. Just absolutely kicking it up. A storm over there. And just look at that gold income. 2,600 gold income. And that's infinite. That's the best part. You don't have to fight for map control for that one. That is just always coming through. Feels good, bro. All right, now. A little bit more of a siege push coming into the middle of the map. Men at arms chasing them out of the base saying, Oi, get out of here. We're sick of seeing you guys around us. Absolutely frustrated with you. Looks like he's going to look to close up the stone walls on the front here. Will wall himself out as well. Is he going to throw down a gate? I mean, it makes sense, but... He's got a couple of options as, as to how he looks to play this out. For me, in this position, 
if I'm Corvinus, I'm going into a whole bunch of lances or, or knights. The problem is that Voldemar, he's got a pretty big brain. So you know what he's doing? Hand cannoneers. Hand cannoneers. And I'm not talking five hand cannoneers. I'm talking six with 18 in the queue behind it, baby. That is a lot of hand cannoneers. That's a lot of gold that he's going to be pumping onto the field. And it is just, it's full gold at this point. Look at this. We're, we're, you can't really get a more gold heavy composition than this. At least not as the Mongols. Obviously, I, I, I think of gold heavy and I'm like, Ottomans. You know, the Genissary. I, I can just make only Genissaries, and it's more gold-heavy than anything else in the game. Which is true. Unless if you want to go for, like, full upgrades. But that's not really a, an army composition. All right, well, Corvidus, once again, struggling. I feel like he's being chased around the map somewhat. Keep in mind, he's lost two landmarks. This will be a third one if it does go down. He's got a pretty decent-sized military here. Voldemar, he's got to be careful, though. Corvidus able to pick off the first one. He's got the roller shutter trigger upgrade. Looks to focus down the bombards. Will be able to find it. Both of them going down. Only the mangonel remains. And with that, he cleans up the attack. Corvinus staying in the game. The absolute goat right now. You look at the score and you go, oh my lord, Corvinus is just so far behind. But to be honest, he's not. He's not. He's honestly not. I feel like he's in a really decent spot. The main thing that he needs to do is he needs to shut down enemy trade, and he hasn't done that. Even just one or two knights is more than enough. Just bring them down here. You can see that there's we've got cannons, uh, so maybe you want to go for maybe, maybe, maybe a few more than that, just maybe five or six knights, something like that. But Corvinus has actually got some decent numbers on the outposts. He needs something to distract the enemy, to drive... Oh, Rebaldic when Randy get him, Randy! Brrrah! Get him, Randy. It's, it's only good when it's infinite. Randy, has anybody ever told you you were such a disappointment? I know you hear it all the time from your mum, but anybody else? No, Randy. No. All right. Well, I'll tell you now, Randy. I'm disappointed in you. There was so much you could have done, and the hand cannoneers just come in and absolutely rinse you, mate. I'm sorry to see you go down that way. It, it shouldn't have been this way, Randy. And all that production going to get thrown down. And I'm starting to worry for Corvinus because he is up against an enemy with a 10 times greater military than himself. 12 times greater. I'll keep it. I'll keep you guys updated with that actual number. You can see, oh, now, now it's down to a 7 times greater. Uh, looking at an 8 times greater army. Uh, this is math with Drongo. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so slightly more than 8. Uh, but now ba back down to a little bit over 6. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. All right. Uh, that's 3 out of 4. Destroyed. Good luck getting it back up as well. I suspect he might rally in a couple units here just to make sure that it does not get repaired up. And it looks like he will be looking for that last landmark. We'll ride on board with Voldemar and see he does know where that last landmark is as the outposts are now in the middle of the base. He's looking to pick up the cannon emplacement as well. Something tells me this game is not going to be going the way of Corvinus, unfortunately. He's been on the back foot this entire game. It's been a real struggle for him. But I feel like if there's one thing we can learn from this game... You can't let a Mongol player trade. Full stop. Even if they don't want to go for the trade landmark, they can still trade. And they can still do it very, very efficiently. Take a look at this. Like, we're talking 86 gold coming in every single trip on this. Obviously, they've got all of those extra resources that are coming through as well. More than 40 traders. And that just pumps up this insane mass of units that we've got here. Full of hand cannoneers. Keshiks. I tell you what, this this is uh, this has been an, an absolute clinic coming out from Voldemar. He's played it really well. Barely, barely any mistakes. And now we've got three landmarks out of the four taken down. Let's double check with them and see if we can spot anything. He's going for the repair. Is he going to find it in time, though? Is it going to be focused down? Corvin is looking for it. I think he might be okay. He, he's going to run out of wood. He's going to run out of wood. Insufficient wood. Corvinus. No, not like this. We've already made one adult joke. Oh, he's done some market trading. He's switched it around. And at the same time, King's Palace, 2,800. He's popping deals out. He's trying to keep it alive. Bombard still firing down at a house for some reason. Get it out. And it looks like he will live a little bit longer unless... No, he's got it. He's got it. You'll see that number switch from three to two. And he keeps it himself in the game. A little bit longer. He's down to 70 vills, though. He's lost so, so many villagers here. Needs to start gathering more wood so he can repair more landmarks. And that's never a position you want to be, especially against a guy who's 200-200 with an army the size of... Oof. It's it's a big army. It, it, it is a large army. It is he, he is in charge of this game. We will say that. Much. I suspect it's only a matter of time until Salami, rather Corbinus, uh, sorry, sorry if I refer to him as his old name. You know, like sometimes I refer to Demo as his old name. 
obviously because in your head you've got to you know what this person looks like so you know who it is that's playing and naturally it's like I'm, I'm not trying to to dead name him or anything like that but it's just like Corvinus it's just it, it it's it's hard for it to stick sometimes but uh anyway we move on we move forward and take a look at this Voldemort just dropping down just just a couple just a couple siege workshops ain't not gonna be that, that ain't gonna be happening again he says to Corvinus and uh I mean, at, at this point in time, you've got three landmarks in the base. None of them being repaired. Vil's going to be moving in. And at the same time, that last landmark is under real threat. You can see that these bombards under attack, but they... <laughs> oh, gosh, Corvinus. I, I don't like your odds, buddy, at this point in the game. I'm, I'm giving you about 0.001. Your only chance of victory right now, and I don't even think it would matter would be a disconnect from your opponent. My, my fear is that even if it took them a minute to disconnect, you'd still lose. The AI would just kill you, just A, moving all of the units down. And indeed, towards the base, we do see those villagers repairing, sitting at about 40% of the health at the moment. We'll keep our eye on the prize up to 50% now. He's going to be looking to focus down this landmark, and I think that might be it. You can see the King's Palace now crossing that 60% threshold. But the Barkshire Palace is going down too fast, and good game gets called. Voldemar is your victor. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go and check out Voldemar. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch him live. Check out Corvinus as well. He's a wonderful player, a great friend of the stream. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.